Greetings, mathematician. We're going to follow up yesterday's assignment of add and subtract like mixed numbers with add unlike fractions. And remember, what did like mean? They had the same what? Denominator. So if they're unlike today, the denominators will be different. Excellent. Our notebook page will be 7L and 7R. I promise today will be much shorter than yesterday. All right, pause it if you need to to get that title in. Otherwise, I'm moving on. All right, again, I'm framing these out just so I'm ready to video. Uh, let's go ahead and put our page number in the left, seven left. Go to the right, let's do seven R and Let's zoom in on what we need to know. All right, unit one, lesson seven, adding unlike fractions. And my S is a little sloppy, let me fix that. Today's date is 8-26-2020. Uh, you might actually see this on the 27th. All right, let's see our objective. We will be adding fractions with different denominators. So let's make an I will statement. I will add fractions with unlike denominators. Using multiple methods. All right, let me zoom in. Let's read it once together. I will add fractions with unlike denominators using multiple methods. Remember our fraction vocabulary here, denominator, that's our bottom number. And unlike means they are not the same. All right, just a quick review on vocabulary. We're talking common denominator. So if it's not the same, we need to have both fractions have the same bottom number. Remember, that's going to tell us how many parts the fraction is broken into. Multiplier. This is the number multiplied by both numerator and denominator. to increase the original fraction. Now remember, when we increase the number on that original fraction, we are decreasing the size. For instance, uh, let's do a quick example of I have half and I need to make it bigger my multiplier here would be, let's go with five. Five and five, so I'm multiplying. One times five, I get five. Two times five, I get 10. In my first half, I have an item that is simply one half. My next item, instead of having two pieces, I have 10 pieces now, so that's much smaller pieces. One, two, three, four, five. Then I could copy that on the other side. Doot, doot. So that would be shading in half. So they represent the same amount. The bigger number has more pieces. All right, and in this example, five was our multiplier. All right, if you need to, you can pause. Otherwise, continue on.
Our first method, I want you to look at this as a visual model. And we're going to use the example of uh, one half plus one third. We're going to use two unit fractions here. One half plus one third. So my first uh, post-it tab, I'm going to make my one half. All right. So let's see. One half. I've got one half and one half, right? But I'm only adding a half, so I can go ahead and let's use my scissors to make this precise. Clipping off a half, right? Because I only have a half. Now, the other hole that I have, I'm turning this into thirds. So let me do the best third that I can visually. So it's one third, one third, and one third. I'm going to clip off one of these. All right. So these are the pieces I'm trying to join together. Notice I've got a complete fraction, I've got a complete strip here. If I put it together, if I put them together, it's still what? Is it bigger than one or smaller than one whole? I think it's going to be what? Yeah, I think it's going to be smaller. So what we can do is we can pull down our half. We can pull down our third. So what we want to do is we want to break it into pieces that we can add. We cannot add half, a half and a third when they have different denominators. We need to use a multiplier to increase, we can also do this. Let's say, what is three times two? What do you get? Three times two is six. So what we can say is that this whole piece down here is a denominator of six. So let's increase it to one half use a multiplier times times to equal the denominator of 6 2 times what is 6 3 so let's use that up here 1 times 3 is 3 so our 1 half piece should be 3 sixes 3 of the 6th so i can go in and go boop boop so my 1 half is now 1 sixth plus 1 sixth plus one sixth. If I add them up, I get three sixths. Bring down my one third. Let's do this. One third. We need a multiplier. We want to end up as a denominator of six because we want it to match. Three times what is six? Two. Use it as the top denominator. One times two is two. Now we have two fractions with like denominators. Now we can work. But let's show this visually. So one third should be two sixes. So I can just split that in half. That becomes one sixth. That becomes one sixth. I'm using the visual model to represent it as a whole. So now if I add them up, one, two, three, four, five, two sixths equals five sixths. So if you've got the ability to draw this out, if you've got post-it notes, you could use that fraction website we were working on. But this is how we visually go about it. All right. I personally like the inquiry method. Say it with me, inquiry. And inquiry simply means question. So we want to ask ourselves these questions. Is this a change one or change both? denominator problem. Now, in the example above, could I turn a 2 into a 3? No. What about a 3 into a 2? Is that possible? No. So this is an example of a change both. So, our follow-up question is, 
can one turn into the other with a multiplier? So these are the two questions we have to ask ourselves. So let's grab a sample problem. Let's do oh, uh, 7 tenths plus 1 fifth. Example, 7 over 10 plus 1 over 5. Let's look at both problems. Is this a change one or change both? Can one turn into the other? Can a 10 multiply into a 5? Not easily. What about a 5 into a 10? Yes. So this is an example of a change one. So for a change one, we keep the bigger, 710 plus, and what we want to do is we want to convert our second fraction to become a denominator of 10. 5 times what? 2, 2, 1 times 2 is 2, now we bring it down. 2 tenths equals 7 plus 2 is 9 tenths. This is a change 1. In a change 1 we're only doing half as much work. In a change 2, or change both, we've got to get different multipliers. All right. So this is how I recommend going about it. Start with this inquiry. Read it with me. Is this a change 1 or change both denominator problem? All right. Ladies and gentlemen, I will have some problems on Prodigy. So it'll be about 12 problems on Prodigy. And if you want to follow up and do some more of these problems, there are a bunch of visual models in the class workbook on page 17 and 18. Pages 17 and 18. And if you want to continue doing even more homework, page 13. I'll be looking for results in Prodigy, and these are if you want to do them. All right. All right, mathematicians, have a great day.